Welcome back students. I am your SST teacher Vandana Joshi and you are watching SST Tune. Students, in the previous part of chapter India after independence, we have studied about the condition of India before the independence and after the independence. As the country was divided into two parts, so there were several problems which were faced by a newly born country. Even we have also studied how the problems were resolved by the leaders during that time. Students, not only the challenges to unite the country, even many more challenges to formation of the states, to develop the country and to make the good relationship between the other countries that was also a big task for the newly independent nation because the condition of India was very poor during the British time and many states were under the British rule after the independence as well. Many more other problems were also faced by country. So today we will discuss about these topics under our today's topic that is formation of state in the previous video we have studied a little about the formation of state but there were a lots of problem which were uh, become a kind of you can say a hurdle in the formation of state so what were the problems and how this has been resolved that we will study under this topic. Then after that, the next topic is planning for development. As we know, when India got independence, the economical status of our country was very poor. The treasury was total empty and we were not having any financial help from other countries. So what was the planning for development in the country and how India got its relation with other countries and how it got its financial help that we will study under the planning for development. Then after that our today's last topic is the nation 60 year on. As we know this chapter is based upon India's condition after independence. But now the conditions are totally changed. Many things which were in past were very critical now these have been resolved and now changed. So not only after 60 years even what is the condition of India nowadays in today's that we will study as a conclusion in our today's last topic the nation 60 years on or today's India. So let's start our today's chapter. Students, let's see how the states were formed. Students, this was another problematic area because the Indian National Congress had promised each major linguistic groups its own provinces in 1920. During that time, Congress was promised to all linguistic provinces. Linguistic provinces means the states or the areas which are speaking same languages. So in that the Congress has promised them that if the India get independence during the formation of states, each state will get their linguistic formation. But the main aim of leader during that time after the independence was to prevent any further division of country as earlier only uh, due to that problem to religious and the linguistic problem India was divided into uh, Pakistan and India so the leaders don't want to do again the division of country on the basis of the linguistic manner so what happened then Prime Minister Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru and Deputy Prime Minister Sardar Vallabhbhai Patel. They were opposed on the idea of the linguistic state because they don't want any further division of the country because they want a united nation to make or to run a country easily. So what they did? This decision created a great deal of resentment among linguistic groups because uh, they don't want to make any linguistic state so the idea was 
spread that India should be united. So, after a lots of effort, now all provinces were ready to merge in a united nation as a country, India. But only a strong protest came from the Telugu speaking regions. The districts which were speaking Telugu, they want a independent or we can say a linguistic state in the form of Andhra Pradesh. So, uh, the protest was came by the Madras presidencies uh, who wanted a Andhra state. And the strong protest which was came, it was came under the leadership of Poti Sri Ramalu who was known as the Gandhi of the Telugu speaking region. He was under a hunger strike to uh, want a, a linguistic state. So let's see more about it and also we will see uh, the maps before uh, the independence during the princely state and after formation of a united nation. So, when the protest came from Andhra, a Gandhian named Poti Sri Ramalu went on a hunger strike demanding the formation of an Andhra state and died on the 58th day. This led a widespread chaos. The central government was forced to make the new nation of Andhra Pradesh on October 1st, 1953 and it was a linguistic state. Seeing these, uh, other linguistic communities also demanded their own separate state, a state, a state recognition committee was set up, which submitted its report in 1956. The committee recommended the drawing of districts and provincial boundaries. This was done to form Compact provincial for Assami, Bengali, Odia, Tamil, Malayalam, Kannada and Telugu speakers. Boundaries were also redrawn in North India to create several states. In 1960s, Bombay was divided into two bilingual states of Marathi and Gujarati speakers. Punjab too was divided in 1966 into Punjab for Punjabi speakers who were mostly Sikh and Haryana for those who spoke Hindi or versions of Haryanvi. Students, if you will look on these three maps. The first map is showing the making of linguistic state in which the princely states and the British states are there and it is before 14th of August 1947. So, the princely states are also there and the British India is also there. If you will see in the second map, it is uh, before 1st November 1956, before the formation of a united nation. So here are again the princely states. Now they merged into the other states. And then after that, if you will see in the third map, it is showing Indian states in 1975. So here, no princely states are there. Now India is formed as a united nation. The another problem of independent country after the state formation, that was the economical growth or we can say the planning for the development. So what was the planning for the development by the leaders to run a nation smoothly? One of the major areas that needed attention was the economical growth of country because there were a lot of population in our country but the earning sources were not there. In 1950, the government set up the planning commission to formulate suitable policies for economical growth. PM Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru was its chairman. The Planning Commission defined the country's economic goals and framed policies for the achievement of such goals. It took stock of the country's resources. It also regulated the utilization and distribution of the available resources. 
so as to tackle problems such as poverty, unemployment, price rise, regional imbalances and so on. The main objective of the planning commission was to achieve full employment, higher level of national and per capita income, to set up a society based on equality and justice and absence of exploitation and to reduce inequality of income and wealth. To start our development in the agricultural field, after 1965, the Indian government adopted the policy of introducing high-yielding variety of seeds, increased use of fertilizers and large-scale irrigation. The policy led to an unprecedented increase in agricultural production making India self-sufficient in food grains. This remarkable change was termed as Green Revolution. Moreover, the Planning Commission has been working through its five-year plans to develop, execute and monitored by Planning Commission. You might be thinking what is five-year planning and how it is working. So, let's see. Beginning with 1951, India has completed 11th 5-year plans and the 12th plan. The last of the 5-year plans is coming to an end on March 31, 2017. Through it, has been given an extension of six months to allow minister to complete their appraisals. Now, the planning commission is replaced by Niti Aayog, a new body that gives policies direction. Its foundation principle is cooperative federalism. Most important difference is that Niti Aayog has no power to grant funds or make decision on behalf of state. It is only an advisory body now. Students, not only Planning Commission or Niti Ayo and other policies, even one more important thing which was very helpful in the growth of country and that was India's foreign policy. As we know, India having its good relation with the foreign countries. So, uh, what was the foreign policy and what are the five principles of that policy? Let's see. So students, as you can see, there are five principles of India's foreign policy. So its first principle is fostering cordial relation with other countries, which means that the nation has to make a healthy relationship with other countries in which no partiality with any country. Second is saying that solving conflicts by peaceful means in which that the country will be a kind of secular country in which it will not favor to any country and if any conflicts will be there, so first it should be solved by the peaceful manner. Then third is saying the sovereignty and equality of all nations in which all nations should be dealt as equal and healthy manner. The fourth is saying about the independence of thoughts and actions as per the principle of non-aligned movement or NAF, in which everybody is having uh, independence to uh, provide their thoughts or we can say whatever the action should be taken by the country, it should be uh, in the benefits, not in the destroying manner. So, fifth is saying the equality in conducting international relations. So, whenever the country is making any new relation with any new country, so it should be conducted in the equal manner as it was uh, related with the other countries. So, with students here, total five uh, policies are coming under India's foreign policy. Students, here a notable thing is that India was one of the founding member of several international organizations like United Nations, NAM, 
ایشین ڈیولپمنٹ بینکس جی ٹوینٹی انڈسٹریل نیشن ڈبلو ٹی یو اینڈ مینی مور اوور انڈیا از اے پارٹ آف انٹرنیشنل گروپنگ لائک یو این او این اے ایم سارس بی آر آئی سی اینڈ بی آئی ایم ایس ٹی ای سی اسٹوڈنٹس اٹ واز دا ڈیولپنگ پلانس آف اوور کنٹری ناؤ لیٹ سی ویئر ناؤ انڈیا از اسٹینڈنگ انڈر اوور لاسٹ ٹاپک دیٹ از دا نیشن آفٹر سکسٹی ایئرس اور وی کین سی دا کنڈیشن آف انڈیا ٹوڈے اسٹوڈنٹس آفٹر سکسٹی اور سیونٹی ایئرس آف انڈیپینڈنس It is important for us to review whether we have achieved the ideas and the goals that we have fixed earlier. The most important achievement is that India has been able to retain his development fabric. Means whatever the goals were set by the country, now most of the goals were achieved. the things rules and regulation which were imposed by the british now after independence these all were removed now india has an independent judiciary free press and secular tradition in which no one can interfere in the state and the religion matter despite the diversities communal tensions and the classes the people are united and liberated the unity of our nation on the national days with a feeling of nationalism and the patriotism our national days like independence day republic day and the gandhi jayanti today the government of india has implemented various short and long term programs India has been able to achieve a significant breakthroughs in agriculture and industry. Today, India is one of the leading industrial nation of the world. In addition, the government has introduced various employment schemes and is working towards the addiction of social evils like the caste system and communalism. Better education facilities are also being provided. India has successfully erected various epidemics and polio from the nation. Life expectancy grew up to be 69.89 years, which was only 32 years at the time of independence. India is one of four largest military powers in the world today and has got one of the most sophisticated missiles programs in the world today india is one of the most advanced nation in the field india grew up to be a nation who elected women as speakers prime ministers and presidents unlike the greatest power in the world the united state of america despite such a vast diversity we are a single nation and its feeling of unity is increasing with each passing day in a vast country with such a large population it is necessary for every individual to come forward and contribute towards a cleaner and a better india students here we have seen during the independence what was the condition of our country and now what are the changes in our country after 70 years of independence students here our history last chapter is complete hope you understood it here i am providing you more terms from the chapter which will be helpful to you understand the meaning of that terms For the revision videos and updates, keep watching SST June.